I won't give away too much of the details. I just want to kick it over to you guys and ask if you want to highlight some of the most uh, impactful findings from this. Yeah, I mean, I guess, Kevin, if it's okay with you, we'd like to first contextualize why we are studying the patient population on dialysis. Um, so, you know, as you know, and as your audience will know, understanding seroprevalence is one of the most complete ways to um, track the spread of COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 in general, um, because the antibody response can last or up to two months, two to three months. Um, and there are there have been efforts in the US using community-based surveys to try to get data on seroprevalence. The largest one prior to this probably was in New York, um, where they went to grocery stores and surveyed healthy community residents to and did a lateral flow immune assay to try to understand um, um, SARS-CoV-2 um, seroprevalence in New York. Um, and they found that, um, you know, they found a seroprevalence, they, and that, that's, a, that's a very nice study, but it requires a lot of effort, correct? So um, it requires a lot of on the ground work, um, and it's hard to repeat that kind of a study community survey. And also we think that some of the populations that we may care most deeply about, like people who are racial and ethnic minorities or people who um, are from disadvantaged background or have language barriers would, could be really hard to reach with such a survey. Um, and so we think that studying patients on dialysis has the advantage of overcoming some of those limitations because patients on dialysis undergo monthly lab work as part of their routine care in the US. Um, and in patients on in-center hemodialysis do their lab work without even getting a needle stick because the, the blood can be drawn from the, from while they're on the, on the hemodialysis machine. Plus, they all effectively are covered by insurance once they have end-stage kidney disease. It's a Medicare qualifying condition in the U.S. So that really helps um, minimize some of the selection bias um, that could be associated with a community-based survey and allows for a sort of a, a more practical approach that can be repeatable over time um, and, 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 and conducted longitudinally as well because it's a patient population that's routinely accessing care. Um, uh, the other sort of the third advantage is that um, that patients on dialysis do tend to draw disproportionately from a racial and ethnic minority um, communities. The, the, the risk for end-stage kidney disease in, among Blacks is, is higher. Um, it's almost twofold higher than, than among um, whites. Um, and so uh, it's a population that will be enriched, and they tend to be older. And so um, they, it's a population that is enriched with the types of um, people that we care about reaching as well. And so we really thought that having a random sample would provide an unbiased and practical approach to um, SARS-CoV-2 surveillance um, and allow for longitudinal work as well. Um, Maria, do you want to talk, speak a little bit about our key findings? No, you go. Okay. Um, yeah. So the the key the, the major key findings are that um, you know we we our our survey was done throughout the U.S. We got patients from forty six um, of the fifty states because we worked with a amazing laboratory partner that has that processes blood from patients on dialysis from those forty six states. Um, and so it's got wide ge geographic spread. It does, it is enriched with um, racial and ethnic minorities. We do have a sufficient sample size to reach people from poor neighborhoods and to reach people living in dense areas. And we find that the overall prevalence in, in the patients on dialysis was about 8%. And then when we extrapolate that to the patients living in the US, it's about 9%. This is in July. Um, of, of seroprevalence um, antibodies. We used an assay, which was the um, receptor binding domain um, um, targeting assay. It was a Siemens assay, um, which has great sensitivity specificity. So we feel comfortable with the 
prevalence estimates for the patients patients on dialysis. And you know there is there is a lot of quibbling, um, not a lot, but there's some quibbling about whether that estimate could potentially be applicable to the general population. And, and maybe Maria could could talk a little bit about that part of the findings and, and results. Yeah, sure. Um, so the first, I think we need to start by um, we're really um, lucky to be able to partner with um, Ascend Laboratories, uh, who provide the service to about sixty-three to sixty-five thousand patients um, monthly, um, um, and uh, they work directly with the dialysis facilities. And they really um, are all over the country. As you can see, there's one, one map um, in the appendix that shows the spread. Um, so we're really able to get um, a, a random sample of patients on dialysis um, throughout the country. Of course, um, um, we sample from where the patients are. So you'll find that some, some areas uh, we don't have anyone and that's because there's not there's no dialysis patients or send is not servicing any of the facilities at, at that point but um but with with this we were able to sample twenty eight thousand people uh which is quite a large sample that really uh, um allowed us so th this estimate was created so that we could um we could estimate the prevalence of five percent with uh, 0.5 uh, absolute precision, um, and and so at the region level, um, and um, and then you can see from some of uh, our estimates at the at the age and the 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 region and um, sex, they they all very good, very precise estimates. Um, but the fact that we are able to sample from the entire country really helps us then. Um, make the case that this this population can actually be used to transport the results to the U.S. population, um, and that is done. It's a little bit more technical, but that is done because we have data from the Census Bureau that um, and the American Community Survey, uh, for which we are able to uh, obtain. Um, estimates of the demographics of, of the U.S. population and using those estimates we are able to then uh, make our um, population of dialysis patients, our sample of dialysis patients, to look like the U.S. population and therefore transport those results to the U.S. population. 